St. Patrick's Day is a global celebration of Irish culture. Actually, St. Patrick was kidnapped from his homeland and taken to Ireland as a slave. When he was set free, he left Ireland and had a dream, believing that God told him to go back, which he did. And today, he's remembered as one of Ireland's patron saints who ministered Christianity during the 5th century. St. Patrick was born in Britain and as a young boy professed no interest in Christianity. He was only 16 when his whole world was turned around and he was taken captive. Then, later, because of a dream, he gets ordained as a priest from a bishop and goes back and spends the rest of his life trying to convert the Irish to Christianity. What day in the life of St. Patrick does March the 17th supposedly mark? March the 17th was the traditional death date of St. Patrick. The wearing of green came because of St. Patrick revelers who thought wearing green made one invisible to leprechauns and little fairy creatures who would pinch anyone they could see, not wearing green, of course. Now the people who wore green began pinching others who didn't wear green as a reminder that the leprechauns would sneak up and pinch the green abstainers. Ouch! We celebrate St. Patrick's Day to honor Irish heritage and its rich culture and tradition. In Canada, it's a public holiday in Newfoundland and Labrador. The St. Patrick's Day menu varies, but corned beef and cabbage always seems to make the list among many favorites. A shamrock, or three-leaf clover, is a young sprig of clover used as a symbol of Ireland. St. Patrick, Ireland's patron saint, is said to have used it as a metaphor for the Christian Holy Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The name shamrock simply means little clover or young clover. A lot of the modern-day celebration of St. Patrick's Day really has almost nothing to do with the real man. I've heard it said that the snake myth, the shamrock story, and other tales were likely spread by well-meaning monks. Centuries after St. Patrick's death, leprechaun legends can be traced back to the 8th century. The myth of the pot of gold still exists, and there are still people who go looking for it. Each leprechaun is said to have his own pot of gold, which can often be found at the end of the rainbow. This is Linda Lewis, and I'm wondering, are you one of the ones searching for that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? My gold comes from the one who created the rainbow.